I am going to be showing you guys how to solve a Rubik's Cube with the easiest and fastest method possible. Now, this is not the same method that people use in the competitions. This is a little bit slower, but I must uh, stress that this method is, if you want to get to that point where you're solving the cube really fast, this method is imperative for you to know or at least um, another beginner method. But this is a different beginner method from a lot of the ones people use, but I think it is definitely a lot better. So I'm gonna be showing it to you guys. And um, yeah, so that's how that works. Uh, first, I think you should know a little bit more about the cube. I know that you, you know, probably, you might have this one. This is the normal Rubik's brand. Um, I have this one. It is by Di. Oh, that's upside down. <laughs> this is by Diane, and and it is the same. All the colors are the same, but it's a little bit faster. So either way, it's the same. But you might not know everything about it. Um, first, I want to explain um, some of the terminology I'm going to be using now. These pieces here have two colors, as you can see. This one, this one. All of these have two colors. And those are called edge pieces. You know, they're always going to be in these positions. They're never going to be anywhere here or here. Now, this is the centerpiece. Um, this has, of, of course, only one color, and it, they don't move relative to each other, so they usually are stationary. I mean, unless you rip apart the cube, but, you know, nobody likes that. Uh, these are the corner pieces. These have three colors, and they are on the corners. I guess you probably knew that, though. Uh, this cube has six sides, each of which has nine pieces, including the centerpiece. Um, yeah, that's the Rubik's Cube. <laughs> or, in this case, the Diane Zanchi. Either way. Now, I'm also going to be solving this cube um, with the green side first. Now, you can do these methods, of course, if you think about it, with any side first. It actually doesn't matter, but... I have always used the green side, it is fastest for me, and um, you could decide to interpret this tutorial um, with another color, but I wouldn't. And another thing that I almost forgot, you need to have the right mentality going into this. So you need to understand that we are not solving this side by side by side by side by side by side. We're not solving it six sides uh, one by one. We are solving it layer by layer by layer, so three layers. When we're solving this green side, we're not only putting random green pieces, we're putting the correct green pieces all lined up, like these ones are together, these are together, and you'll see what I mean when I do that. So let's mix this up quickly, and um, there's no real method to the madness of, of mixing these things up. It's admittedly kind of the most boring part, but we'll do that, and now. So the first thing I want to say is I'm not going to be uh, speaking in terms of like R prime, U prime, U R. I'm not going to be using that sort of code for the first two layers. Uh, once we get to the real algorithms on the blue layer, um, the final layer, I will be using those um, that sort of terminology. But first, these, these first two layers are really sort of um, intuitive and they're not really algorithms, so I won't be... Um, saying like algorithm codes for them. So again, we're solving the green side first. So first thing you wanna do is locate the green center. Here it is. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna solve this cross here. There's, there's, that is the first thing to do. So we're gonna put all four edge pieces in to solve the cross. Now they're not gonna be just any edge pieces. They're gonna be, for instance, the correct edge piece that's green and red to go between the green and red sides. So that should be self-explanatory, but it's important that you find the correct edge piece. Now, the edge piece can be in one of essentially three places. It could either be on the face opposite of the green face, like this, so the green is facing down from where we want it to be, um, or it could be facing like this on, on the, the middle layer, facing you or facing the side, either way, or it could be like this, on the bottom layer, facing the green part facing you. So the first thing we're going to do is this one, where it's facing the opposite of the green. All you have to do is align it under the correct center that it's going to go under. So this is r green and red. You're going to put this under the red center because you want it to be between green and red. And you're just going to flip this all the way around. And you're going to see that now you've put that there. And not only have you put any green edge piece there, you've put the correct green and red edge piece between the green and red centers. 
Now the next thing you're going, you're go, bleh, sorry, <laughs> you're good. The next type of edge piece is this one, where it's on the middle layer facing you. Now you can pretty much do any kind of moves you want um, when you're solving this first green cross, because most moves you do are not going to mess up your progress. So if this is here, I can simply rotate it like this to get it now facing here, like the previous one was. And if there was some, a piece here that had already been solved, we could just put it down, move it away, and then recorrect this piece. So you want to, it's pretty easy to get this facing down from facing, from being on the middle layer. So once it is facing down, you're going to do the same thing you just did with the previous piece and put it under its correct center and then flip it over so that it is here. Now this, you'll notice that's there. That is incorrect, but it, we'll, we'll fix that later. Now the final kind of edge piece is the ones that are on the bottom layer if you're holding the green side facing up. They're on the bottom layer with the green part facing you. Now what you want to do for this is you want to find the you want to put it under the correct center anyway. So this is green and white. You're going to put it under the the white and green or the white center with the green center facing up like this. And you're going to do this simple sort of intuitive maneuver. You're going to move this uh, you're going to move this away just like that. Then you're going to bring these two pieces, both both of them, down. Then you're going to move this back there and you're gonna move this up again. And now you've put that in simply by moving it out of the way and then bringing the, the cross down so that you can put it in. Now we've also, now our final edge piece is here. And we're, again, this is orange and green. So we're gonna put it under the orange center. And we're gonna move this away, bring the cross down, temporarily breaking the cross, but that's okay. Bring this piece back and re-correct the cross to where it was. Now the entire cross is solved. Now you notice that these two corners are also solved, but that doesn't matter. We didn't do that. That probably won't have happened for you. Now the way you want to do this, the corners, is the next part. So, so you want to complete the green side by placing in the correct corners and you'll be done. But the first thing I want to point out is not we, we, we didn't put any edge pieces in. You'll notice that all these edge pieces are with the correct center all around the cube. So that is correct. We've done that very well. So the first thing you want to do, uh, corners can be also in one of three places. It can be here um, on this bottom layer with the green facing you if your green center is facing up. That is where you want it. That is the best place to have it, easiest place to have it. If not, that's also fine. They can also be facing with the green side facing down. And I'll show you that just like that. They can also be like this with the green side facing down. Now, a third way they can be is be is like this. With your green center facing up, the piece, its green part is on the correct layer, but the green piece is facing you um, instead of facing up like you want it to be. So the first thing we're gonna do is this. If it's facing, if a green corner is facing you, but it's on the same layer as the green cross, but it's not correctly rotated or it's also not in the correct place. The way you're going to do that is another intuitive sort of uh, algorithm. You're going to bring this down and then you're going to rotate the bottom piece to the left and you're going to bring this side back up. And now you've put that here, which is, as I said, in the ideal place for it to be. And now that is the ideal place for it to be. Now the other situation, like I said, is like this with a with the green oops sorry <laughs> with the green facing down opposite from the green center now the way you're going to want to do that is you can put it under any piece as long as it's not a corner that you've already solved but i haven't already solved this cuz it's not in the correct place but as long as it's not under a corner you've already solved you can simply do this take this green piece on the bottom right and then bring this side down and rotate this a couple times and then recorrect this side. And now it is where you want it. So now that you've got, that you know how to put any kind of piece where, where you want it, which is, as I said, on this bottom layer here, the way that you're going to put it into place once it's there is as follows. You're gonna see what the two other colors other than green are on this piece. In this case, it is yellow and orange. So we're gonna move it to the yellow, between the yellow and orange centers um, under, of course, the, the green here. And the way you're gonna put it in is another intuitive method. You're gonna move it away so so if it's on the left side like this 
you're gonna move it to the right. If it was on the right side like this, you'd move it the other way. So if it's on the left side, you're gonna move it away like that. You're gonna bring this side down. You're gonna re-correct it to where it was and bring this side back up to re-correct the cross. Now, not only have we put in a green piece here, it's the correct green piece. As you can see, it's orange and this part is yellow. So that's, that's correct. Now, yet again, we have a piece that's on the left side. So it is orange and white and green. It's already under the orange, or it's already between the white and orange sides. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna move it to the, if it's on the left, we're gonna move it to the right, bring this part of the cross down, place the piece in, and re-correct the cross. And now that piece has been placed there as well. Now, the next piece we have to do is this one is red and yellow. So we're gonna twist it around on the bottom here until it's between the red and yellow sides. And we're gonna do the same thing, okay? We're gonna move it away to the right because it's on the left side. It's, we're gonna move it away to the right, bring this part of the cross down, and then we're gonna re-correct, we're gonna re-put it in, and then, not re-put it in, that's not even English, but you know what I mean. Put it in and then put the Recorrect the cross. Now, finally, we have an, with the, the other case, which is if a piece is on the right side, but it's also in the correct location. That is also fine. We're gonna put it between the correct centers, which it already is, because it's white and red, between the white and red and green. And you're gonna twist it, instead of this way, you're gonna twist it this way. So if it's on the right side, you're gonna twist it left. And if it's on the left side, you're gonna twist it right. So we're gonna put it left, bring this side down, place it in, and put it up. Now, you have solved the entire green face, but not only have you solved the entire green face, you've solved the entire first layer because not only are they, you know, all green, these are all white with the white center, <clears throat> sorry, these are all orange with the orange center, these are all yellow with the yellow center, and these are all red with the red center. So you've solved a whole third of your cube. Great job. Now, we are onto the second layer. I think, personally, this is the easiest layer to solve. Might just be me, I don't know. The way you're going to solve this layer is as follows. You're going to locate an edge piece that does not contain the color blue that is on this bottom layer, okay? Because blue is not one we want to work with because none of the edge pieces we're going to try and put in here are going to have blue because blue is the last layer, not any of these colors. So you want to find a piece without blue. In this case, I found a, a white and a red piece here. So you're going to put it under the center of, of the color that's facing you. So you, you have to look at the other color, but you're gonna put it under the center of the actual color that's facing you. So even though this is red and white, you're not gonna put it under the red center, you're gonna put it under the white center because the white is facing me. Now, check out what other color it is. It's red, so we know that the red is here on the left side. So we're gonna rotate that away, away from the other color, okay? Bring down the left side, bring the bottom back to the left, and then bring back up the left side here. And then you noticed that you have misplaced a corner here. That is fine. What you've actually done with that last little algorithm is you've paired up this corner with its corresponding edge piece. So now when we do our algorithm to put that corner back, which if you remember is this, 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 and this, see that in doing that, in putting that corner back, we have now placed this edge piece between its correct center pieces. So that is what you want to do for all of them. Now, we are going to, let's see here, find the next one. So as you can see, there's another piece on this uh, bottom layer here that doesn't have blue in it, and it's this one. So it's orange and white. We're going to put it under the orange center, and we're going to see that white is to the left of orange. So once again, we're going to do it to the right, the opposite of the other color. We're going to do it to the right. We're going to bring this left side down. Bring the bottom back to the left, then recorrect this left side. And then again, we've misplaced this corner, but it's now paired with the correct edge, as you can see. So we're gonna put them both in by way of the same method we were using before, where we, if it's on the right side, remember, we do it to the left. So to the left, bring this down, bring this back, and there we go. So as you can see, we've now also put in this edge piece. So we have two, at least two. <laughs> so we're gonna find the next edge piece. This one is yellow and orange. So the orange is also 
on the left side once again. And we are going to twist it to the right, the opposite direction. Whoa. Bring this side down. Bring the bottom back. Correct this side. And again, misplace the corner. So we'll move this away. Bring this down. Place it in. And put it up. Aha. Now we should only have one more right here. And it is red and yellow. So again, yellow is on the left side. So we're going to bring this to the right. Bring this down. Put this in. And bring it up. This is has been misplaced, but it is correctly paired. So we're going to put them both in using the same method as we did before. And now we've solved the entire second layer. But... Uh, there were some other possibilities that could have happened on that second layer that I didn't cover So let me set those up quickly and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so here's one of the situations We have all of the second layer complete except for this piece, but it's the correct piece Oriented incorrectly because the white is on the orange side and the orange is on the white side So the way you do this is simply by putting in another piece in place of that piece um, Acting like it is the correct one. So we're gonna put in this piece to here. So we're gonna twist it away Bring this down Bring this back to the left and put this up and then as you see we've misplaced this corner So we're gonna use the same method to place it back in so now that that's been placed back in, we notice that there's a random piece in this um, slot, and the piece that should go there has been now misplaced uh, somewhere um, on this bottom layer. Here it is, so we'll bring it back over, and we will now uh, maneuver this piece back in there correctly by putting the correct piece under the correct center, and again, moving it away, bring this side down, putting this in, and moving this up. Now they're paired back together, so we will use the same method we have been to put them in. And now it is correct. Now there is one more situation that I'm gonna cover, so I'll be back in just one more second. Now this happens a lot. I don't know why it didn't happen in that situation, but what can happen also is that you'll get the piece on the bottom here, um, and instead of having the other color that is not the center color, having the other color be on the left, it'll be on the right. So in that situation, what you'll do is again, you're gonna rotate it away from the other color. So instead of being away this way, since it's on the right side, we're gonna rotate it away that way. Instead of the left side, we're gonna bring down this side, rotate the bottom back to the right, and correct this part of the cross. And then you notice that this corner has been misplaced, but this edge piece is now paired with it. So again, we'll do the same thing we always do. We'll tw if it's on the left side, we'll twist it to the right, correct? So we'll move that away, bring this down, put this in, and put it up. Now, our entire second layer is solved once again, and I should have covered all of the possibilities for um, locations of the pieces. So yes, that should be good. If I didn't, then I'm sorry. I'll make another video. Tell me about it in the comments. Now. We are on to the daunting third layer. Oh no. This is gonna be the hardest layer with the most algorithms. And yes, now they are gonna be real algorithms that will have real sets of steps that you have to do that are kind of long. But if you memorize them, which is kind of the goal of this whole video, then you will be fine. I have been doing this for over a year uh, actually over two years and I have completely memorized them. I can't I don't even think about it when I do it You will get to that point like within a week. I promise Just stick with me and keep practicing after watching this video watch it a couple times and just keep practicing trust me <laughs> uh, So the first thing oh god <laughs> the first thing you're gonna do is Build the cross now you would do it the same way except for you don't want to mess up these other layers So they're gonna be a whole set of algorithms for all the same things you did on the green leather layer But this time they're gonna be like really complex algorithms because you don't want to mess up the screen layer So the first thing you're gonna do like I said is build the cross now You're gonna find the cross in one of a number of ways now. Let me start at the first one So one second now the first possibility you can encounter is a dot like this the second one is an L shape like this. And the third one is a cross or a, a line through the middle like this. Or if you get lucky, you could encounter the full cross. It, it doesn't, you know, it, it, it's, it's very, very random. So we're gonna go back to the dot here, if I can remember 
how, wait one second. Three, two, one. Okay, so back to the dot. The fur you do the same algorithm for every single um, for every single possibility you can encounter on the stages of building the cross. The difference is how you hold it. So I'm just going to go through all of them. No matter which one you have, I will encounter yours along the way. So the first one is the dot. Now the algorithm is as follows: f prime. Oh, I should also. <laughs> Sorry, I should also mention, if you don't know what these codes I'm saying mean, you can kind of just do what I do on the video. Just practice it a lot, because I didn't know what they meant when I first learned, and I was using a piece of paper. That was really hard, but you have a video, so I can you can just do what I do. But just practice a lot, and you should be able to memorize them without knowing the codes. So just either listen to the codes or do what I do. It does not matter. So here's how it works. F prime r u r prime u prime and then f that will bring you to this little l now you're going to hold the l the same way that it just appeared you're going to hold it with one facing u and one facing the right hold it up just like i did with the last one and you are going to do f prime R U R prime U prime and then F. Now you have the line. You're going to hold the line uh, horizontally like this. And again, the exact same al algorithm as the last two. F prime R U R prime U prime and F. And now you have the cross solved. So you notice that whichever one you get, you do the same algorithm, just hold it different ways, and you'll cycle through all of the other ones and then get to here. So now that we've solved the cross, you'll notice that something's different from when we uh, originally solved the cross on the green side, which is that despite the fact that these blue uh, edges are oriented in a uh, cross shape. Uh, they're not actually correctly oriented. I used the wrong word there before. You'll notice that this is the same as this, but this is not, this is not, this is not. You actually have to do a separate step to orient these. So what we have to do here uh, is essentially every single combination you can reach here will always have a situation where at least two of these are correctly positioned. So rotate yours around until you find it. In this case, it's right here. You see orange and white are both correctly positioned. Now, it's they're usually, sorry, usually gonna be adjacent like this, but sometimes they will be across from each other like this. And I'll show you what to do uh, if that happens. Now, if it's like this, which is the most common thing that can happen, flip it around to the two that are incorrectly placed. And you're gonna hold one facing you and one facing the right, like this. And you're gonna do the following algorithm. R, U2, R prime, U prime, R, U prime, R prime. And then you're just gonna rotate it once more. Um, and what you'll find is that now all of them are correctly oriented. Now. Now, if you do encounter a situation such as this one, where the only way that you can get two pieces correct at the same time is if they're across from each other, like this, then you're gonna do just the same algorithm. Uh, just hold one of the correct ones facing you. And again, that algorithm is R, U2, R prime, U prime, R, U prime, R prime. And now you'll see that we are where I was before, where there are two correct now adjacent and two incorrect also adjacent. And you're just gonna do that one more time, which is R, or wait, sorry, let me start over. <laughs> you're gonna do that one more time, which is R, U2, R prime, U prime, R, U prime, R prime. And then once more. So now, 
Those are the two situations you can encounter, and now, regardless of which one you encountered, they are going to be correctly oriented. The next step is the second to last step, which is um, placing the corners. So this step is not uh, going to be dealing with the correct rotation of the corners, but just the correct placement. Like, for instance, this piece is between the blue, white, and red uh, sides, but and it's blue, white, and red. So it's in the correct place. It's just not rotated correctly. And we want to get that for all of them. Now, the way you need to do that is locate one corner piece that is already correctly placed. For instance, this one. If you don't have one, you can just first do this uh, algorithm uh, just holding the cube anyway. But I'll show you that in just a second. Chances are you're going to have one. But don't rotate the the top to try and find a situation where one is correctly placed because the other will um, unorient the cross. You just want to um, have a correctly placed corner um, and if you don't, I'll get to that, like I said. Now, once you have found this, um, you're gonna hold it with, as we usually do, the blue side facing up and the correctly placed corner on the right side, just like this. And you're gonna do this algorithm, L prime, U, R, U prime, L, U, R prime. And then you're gonna re-correct the cross by just doing this. And you'll notice that it, okay, so you'll either notice that all the corners are correctly placed or nothing has changed at all. You'll need to, you might need to do this up to two times. Sometimes it works on the first time, sometimes it doesn't. Regardless, it didn't work this time, so we'll do it the exact same thing again. L prime, U, R, U prime, L, U, R prime. Correct the cross. And now you'll see every single piece is correct. <clears throat> Sorry, I have I don't know what's happening today. I had a cough earlier today. Anyways, you will see that all of the pieces are now correctly placed. This one is yellow, red, and blue between the yellow, red, and blue. This one is uh, blue, red, and white between blue, red, and white. This one is orange, white, and blue between orange, white, and blue, and yellow, orange, blue between yellow, orange, blue. So they're all correctly placed. Now, chances are there's a one-third chance that you'll have them correctly rotated as well. That's fine. Okay, so now what I'm going to show you is what would happen if you had no correctly placed corners at the start. So just one second. So as you can see now, I have no corners correctly placed. This one is not, this one is not, this one is not, and this one is not. So you're just going to perform the same algorithm we did before, holding the cube any way that you like. Again, the algorithm is L prime, U, R, U prime, L, U, R prime. Recorrect the cross. And then you'll notice somewhere on the cube, doesn't really, it, it, there's no standard thing that'll tell you where on the cube, but somewhere on the cube you'll have one correctly placed. For instance, this one. Now you're gonna do the exact algorithm I said before and hold this um, on the right side, like I said. Again, the algorithm is L prime, U, R, U prime, L, U, R prime. Then rotate the top again. Now in this case, they're all now correctly placed. Like I said though, sometimes you'll have to do it twice. That's okay. So once you get to this point, you'll encounter a num one of a number of possibilities. You can have two incorrectly placed, like, like next to each other like this, two incorrectly placed diagonally here or here, or you can have three incorrectly placed, or you can have all four incorrectly placed. And I mean, sorry, rotated for all of those things. So either two here that are incorrectly rotated, two here that are incorrectly rotated, three that are incorrectly rotated, or all four, like in this case, that are incorrectly rotated. So again, we are now on the last step, rotating the corners to solve the cube. So what we're trying to do is, like I said, rotate the corners. What you want to do is, I'm going to go through all the different possibilities. So the first thing is if you have all four, you're going to, have, you're going to take any two that are, have their, their blue pieces facing the same way. So in this case, these are both facing this way. These are both facing outwards like that. But you can't do it like this. That would um, not be great. So yeah, don't, don't do it when they're facing out like that. You're gonna, you're gonna take two that are facing the same way 
and you're gonna do the final algorithm. Now, you're gonna it's gonna take a while to memorize this, it's a bit longer, but essentially it's the same algorithm you use when you are aligning the cross, and then also afterwards doing the inverted version of that. So, here we go. R, U2, R prime, U prime, R, U prime, R prime, L prime, U prime two, L, U, L prime, U, L. And you've now correctly rotated those corners. Now you're gonna come over here to these corners, which are, again, having their uh, blue pieces face um, in the same way, even though they're not facing the same way, they're facing, they're the, they're the same kind of piece, they're facing you know opposite ways. You're gonna do that exact algorithm again, which is, R, U2, R prime, U prime, R, U prime, R prime, L prime, U prime, 2, L, U, L prime, U, L. Now, what you've done is rotated them once, and you're just gonna need to rotate them once more to get them all the way rotated around to where they're supposed to be. So again, R, U2, R prime, U prime, R, U prime, R prime, L prime, U prime two, L, U, L prime, U, L. Now I'm finished. But that is what will you will do if you have four incorrectly uh, rotated pieces. Now, three pieces. So in this case, I have three pieces incorrectly rotated instead of four, because this one is already correctly rotated. So what you're gonna wanna do in this situation is hold the cube like this with one incorrectly placed piece here with the correctly placed piece above it and the two incorrect ones here. And you're gonna do the algorithm. R, U2, R prime, U prime, R, U prime, R prime, L prime, U prime, two, L, U, L prime, U, L. Now you've gotten to where you have two incorrectly placed. And this brings me to the next case. If you solved the, you oriented the cross and placed the corners correctly and you got to here, that's where you're gonna pick up on this video. You now have two and you can join in with the same algorithm, the same way you would do it with if, you, if you had two from any other method. Now, you might have two that are facing opposite directions like this, or you might have headlights, which is where there's two of the same color, in this case blue, facing, um, you know, the same direction. So either way, you're gonna hold them both on the right side like this and do the algorithm. R, U2, R prime, U prime, R, U prime, R prime, L prime, U2, U prime two, L, U, L prime, U, L. Now you've rotated them so that they have headlights and you're gonna do it once more. R, oh wait, sorry, I went ahead there. <laughs> R, U2, R prime, U prime, R, R, U prime, R prime, L prime, U prime two, L, U, L prime, U, L and you're finished. Now for the final case, if you have two diagonal. So in this case, I have two diagonal. The way you're gonna wanna do this is as follows. One of the pieces is gonna be facing the side like this when you hold it on the right. The other, when you hold it on the right, is gonna have its blue part facing you. Take the one that's on the side and do the algorithm holding it here like so. R, U2, R prime, U prime, R, U prime, R prime, L prime, U2, U prime two, L, U, L prime, U, L. And now, once again, you have two, bringing you back to the same thing you would do if you got two any other way. Hold them like this, on both on the right side, and finally, this is the last thing, uh, the last possibility, do the algorithm. R, oh, I went ahead. Do the algorithm. 
r u two r prime u prime r u prime r prime l prime u two u prime two l u l prime u l and you're done. Now, if anywhere along this line you do this this algorithm and it simply doesn't change anything, that's because your your pieces need to be rotated twice. So all you have to do in any of those situations is just do it again. That's that. If I didn't cover anything, um, be sure to let me know. Um, just simply watch this video the next few times that you're doing your Rubik's Cube and you will memorize it. I memorized the stuff in about a week and now I can do it um, all pretty fast. Like I said, this, um, this method is not the sort of professional method, but I can tell you what, you can get pretty fast at it. It, it, it is, you can master this method and really become fast at it. And there are lots of things you can do to become better um, at this method. Uh, you know, just without, you know, c completely stepping up to another method. But eventually you'll get to the point where you just sort of, it's second nature and you just know what you're doing at all times and it's easy, easy, easy. And, you know, it, it, it really, it's, it's cr it feels weird, right? Because this is something that people uh, always are so surprised that you can do, I'm, I'm sure. Um, and it feels weird to be able to do it get to the point where you do it really fast, um, but you'll soon get there. And especially, I'm trying to get back to the third layer here, by the way, if you wanna know what I'm doing. Um, you'll get to the point where you can do it fast and you can make your own additions to the algorithms to make them much faster. And, um, you know, it, it, it all becomes muscle memory, right? Like when I do this stuff, I don't have to think about what I'm doing. I just, my mind analyzes the situation that I'm in and I, all, I just form the, formula at my, uh, in my head and I do it. It's simple enough, right? So it, it you know, I, I don't know. It, it's not as fast as you can possibly be, but it definitely has, um, a, it, there's an ability to master this method. It's not like you can't ever be fast. See, I'm done. That's, I was about maybe a minute and 30, but that's probably because I was talking. Um, but yeah, so I mean, you can get to the point where you're pretty fast with this method and yeah, that's that's pretty much that. Sorry if this video was a little bit long. Um, if you want any more specialized tutorials on any parts of the cube, I can do those. Let me know, and I will be happy to help you out. So yeah, that's that. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like if you did enjoy or learned anything. Comment your feedback on the video. Video? Okay. Video down below, and I will respond to all comments, and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye-bye.